بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى عليه وصحبه ومن وله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, We're on Foundations of Islam and we're on the Qasas al-Anbiya uh, Stories of the Prophets and the history of uh, this message from Allah to humanity And we're talking about the Bani Israel after Musa and Harun after Moses and Aaron um, had passed on and so the person that takes over for Musa alayhi salam uh, after his death is Yusha uh, bin Nun, which is Joshua. Uh, he has a book about him in the Bible, the book of Joshua. Um, uh, of course, not all the things in there we would say are 100% accurate. Um, we don't have a lot of information about him though uh, in the Quran and the Sunnah. Um, in the Quran, he's mentioned as being Musa's servant that went with him when they were looking for Al-Khidr. Um, and so uh, we don't know a lot about him from the Quran. And then there is a hadith, a long hadith by the Prophet Muhammad about uh, Yusha bin Nun uh, discussing his uh, role and a big event and a miracle that happened with him. Um, but it looks like Yusha bin Nun is their leader that takes them into Palestine and Philistine and helps them to take that land back uh, for the Bani Israel because they hadn't had it because they went to Egypt 400 years ago and they had lost their land to other peoples. Um, so now Allah is sending them back there and giving them back the land. Um, and Yusha bin Nun is their leader. <clears throat> so uh, the hadith is pretty long. We'll read it. The Prophet ﷺ said, A prophet amongst the prophets carried out a just military expedition, a jihad. Right? And so he said to his followers, any one of you who has married a woman and wants to consummate the marriage and has not done so yet should not accompany me. Nor should a man who has built a house but hasn't completed its roof. Nor should a man who has sheep or she camels and is waiting for them to give birth to their young. And so you see here, Yusha right away, he's kind of giving us the right uh, the the right mentality you want to have with your soldiers. You don't want your your soldiers, if you're going on a, a just military expedition, you don't want people that are distracted or torn, right? You want people that are focused. And that's why he gives those examples. Somebody that's a newlywed, somebody who's not finished building their house, somebody that's got a bunch of animals about to give birth, um, that's a lot of wealth for them. They're going to be distracted and diverted and not committed to this expedition. So he didn't want them to come along with him, which makes sense. Um, so the expedition, the prophet let, carried out that expedition and he reached a town at the time or near the time of Asr. And they're having a battle. And in those days, there's not electricity, right? And uh, once the night comes, basically the battles have to stop and everybody goes back to their camp and they have a chance to regroup. And Yusha bin Nun, alayhi salam, he didn't want the other army to have this chance to regroup and resupply themselves and rest. He wanted to finish the battle and get this victory right away. Um, so Yusha, uh, alayhi salam, he talks to the son and he says, O oh son, you are under Allah's order and I am under Allah's order. So stop from setting. And so the son stopped. Uh, this is a miracle, right? Um, the sun stopped so until Allah made them victorious. So basically you kind of have this freezing of time to allow them to finish uh, that battle. Um, so this is a great miracle uh, that was given to Yusha bin Nun. Um, you have another instance too where um, for the Bani Israel, they weren't allowed to keep spoils of war. And that's something that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, he said that's one of the gifts given to him and for his ummah is that we are allowed to keep spoils of, of a battle. Um, but for the previous uh, nations, they weren't allowed to do that. They had to give those spoils from the battle. They had to give them up uh, to Allah. And often Allah would send down a column of fire to consume the spoils of war. And so he collected all the spoils and they put it uh, uh, in a pile to for the column of fire to burn it. And it says that the fire, the Prophet says, the fire came down, but it didn't burn the spoils. And so the Prophet said to his men, some of you have taken some of the spoils. So one man from every tribe should give me a pledge of allegiance by shaking my hand. And so the leaders from each tribe came and shook the hand of the Prophet Yusha. 
And whenever the one who's had tribesmen that stole, their hand got stuck to his hand. So he went to shake his hand and then he can't let go. This is another miracle. And so he said, you should have told them your tribe has the people who stole. And so he said, I need everyone from your tribe to come and give me the Pledge of Allegiance. And so all the people from the tribe came and each one shook his hand. And it says two or three people got stuck to his hand. And so he said, you are the ones that committed the theft. And so they basically they brought what they had taken from the spoils and they brought this big uh, head of gold, like as the size of the head of a cow. And they put it there in the pile and then the fire came again and consumed all of it. And so we see this early on, the Ben Yisrael, they're given prophets as leaders. Um, after Yusha, they get another prophet to be their leader. Um, in the Bible, that prophet is called Samuel. Um, we are not sure if that is his name for sure. We can't say it's not his name. We can't say it is his name for sure. We don't have enough evidence uh, to go on. The name of this prophet is not mentioned in the Quran or in the Sunnah of uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Um, this prophet is talked about in the Quran because you have the story of Ben Israel selecting a king. And so um, Ben Israel, they wanted to have a king instead of being led by a prophet because they saw the other tribes and people around them had kings. And this is kind of a, a, a presented in a negative light in the Quran because Muslims, the Muslims are always supposed to be proud of who they are. We're supposed to be the trendsetters. We're supposed to be the ones that other people want to be like. We're not supposed to feel inferior or have an inferiority complex. That's a really bad thing when we as Muslims, as the believers in Allah, the worshipers of Allah, if we feel like we want to copy other people, we are supposed to be the ones others want to copy. And so they had this feeling. They said, well, other people have kings. We should have kings too. And so they went to their prophet and they said, ask Allah to give us a king. Ask Allah to pick a king for us. Um, and Allah picked them a king. And of course, he gives them some stipulation. And we'll read some of the translation of the ayat from Surah Al-Baqarah. Um, Allah gave them Talut, which uh, his English name is Saul. And he's also mentioned in the, the Bible. Um, so Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah, is translated as, Have you not considered the assembly of the children of Israel? After the time of Moses, when they said to a prophet of theirs, send to us a king and we will, we will fight in the way of Allah. We will fight these oppressive people. And the prophet said to them, would you maybe hold back from fighting if fighting is ordered for you? And they said, why shouldn't we fight in the cause of Allah when it's just? Because we've been driven out from our homes and they've taken our children. But when the fighting was actually ordered for them, they turned away except for a few of them. They got scared and, and backed off. And Allah is knowing of the wrongdoers. And their prophet said to them, Indeed, Allah has sent you Talut as your king. And they said, How can he be our king? We have some of us that have are more worthy of kingship than him. And he doesn't have any extra wealth. Like he's not a rich guy. And he said, Indeed, the Prophet said to them, Indeed, Allah has chosen him over you and has increased him abundantly in knowledge and in stature. And Allah gives the kingdom to whom he wills. And Allah is all-encompassing and all-knowing. And so again, they object to this person that Allah chose. They told Allah to pick for them, and then right away they object to it. And they said, no, he, we have people that are richer than him that should be the king. or more noble from a better tribe. But Allah picks who he, who he knows is best. And so he picked Talut for them. And then the Prophet said to them, Indeed, a sign of the kingship is that the ark or the chest will come to you, in which is assurance from your Lord, and it has remnants from the family of Musa and from the family of Harun, and it's carried by the angels. Indeed, in that is a sign for you if you are believers. And so during the time of Musa and Harun, the Ben Israel were ordered to build this ark. They call it the Ark of the Covenant. Uh, in English or in the Bible, it's mentioned as the Ark of the Covenant. And in it, there are relics from Musa. Like his stick is supposed to be in there. The stone tablets uh, that were written on. And this Ark had been stolen from the Bani Israel by some of the people in Philistine that were fighting against them. 
Um, they had lost the battle and the ark was taken from them. So Allah says, a sign for you that Talut is supposed to be your king is the ark will be returned to you and angels will bring it back to you. And so when they saw that, they finally submitted and accepted him. And so then they had a huge battle that they had to attend to. And this battle was very intense for them because there was a huge man named Jalut and his Goliath in English. And Jalut, he was the leader of his army. He was their main warrior and nobody could beat him in battle. He was so huge. He was a giant, right? And so Allah tells us in Surah Al-Baqarah, the, the whole story is found in Surah Al-Baqarah with Talut and this. And it says, when Saul went forth with his soldiers, he said, indeed, Allah will be testing you with a river. And so at this time, the army was thirsty. They've been marching for a while. And so now Allah gives them a test to see who's really committed and sincere. And he says, whoever drinks from the river is not with me. And whoever does not taste it is with me, truly. And there is an exception for those who take just a handful. So they were allowed to either take one handful or not drink at all. And it's probably easier to not just not drink at all. I think if you taste it, you would want some more if you're really thirsty. So, but anyway, the test was either they drink not at all or they're really disciplined. They take one drink, their handful, and that's it. And that was their proof that they were sincere. So everybody who drank from it, um, they were told to go back. And they weren't allowed to march with Talut. And there's a narration that he had about uh, 300 and, and some people with him. The same number of the, of the Muslims that went to Badr. Uh, that's how many were with Talut. So he had a much smaller army than he set out with. Um, and so it says, Then when he had crossed along the river and those who believed with him, then they said, some of them said, there's no power left for us today against Goliath and his soldiers. But those who were certain they were going to meet Allah, they said, how many times in history has a small company defeated a large company by the permission of Allah? And Allah is truly with those who are patient. And so when they went forth to face Jalut and his army, they said, our Lord, pour upon us patience and plant firmly our feet and give us victory over the disbelieving people. So they made this dua. And so they were able to defeat that army. And you have Prophet Dawood, alayhi salam. He comes forward and he actually is the one who defeats Jalut. And so they're able to have victory uh, at this difficult time. Assalamu alaikum.